Hi, I'm Jonathan Paula, and welcome to this special episode exclusive to the Movie Night Archive channel. I wanted to talk about my most and least anticipated films of 2016, and so here I am in my office. Apologies for the low rent digs, just wanted to do a quick and dirty webcam upload. I have Wikipedia open to the 2016 in film page, which lists all the movies currently scheduled to come out this year. Obviously things can change, release dates can get moved around, but here's what the current schedule looks like, and I'm gonna go through and pick out the ones I have my eye on so far. And um, we start off this weekend, we open up with The Forest. I know nothing about it, I don't really care for it. 13 hours, Benghazi, blah, blah, blah. Ride Along 2, it looks halfway decent, I don't know. Dirty Grandpa, not excited for that. Fifty Shades of Black, you just kill me now. Honestly, please. Kung Fu Panda 3, I'm surprised they keep making these because I really didn't care for the first one and skipped the second one. Hail Caesar, this one is probably the first one that I'm kind of excited and might actually pay money for. And it comes out on my birthday, which is kind of cool. Joel and Ethan Cohen writing, directing. That's really all I need to know. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, my wife loves the original story, so this zombie adaptation might be entertaining. Don't have a lot of high hopes for it, though. Deadpool, another one of those comic book franchises that I'm not really familiar with or excited about, but because it's Marvel, it's probably going to be halfway decent at the very worst, and probably pretty excellent at the very best, so this one could be really great. I'm looking forward to it. Zoolander 2, um, this is the first in a long line of movies in this video that I'm going to mention. Why are we getting another sequel? Why? Why? <sighs> Zoolander, was, was it 15 years ago? I don't care anymore about it. Move on. So we will. Gods of Egypt, uh, this looks like it's gonna bomb. This is a live action fantasy in like the old Egyptian times and we've had like a dozen of these in the last few years and none of them have really performed well. The Clash of Titans, the Hercules movies, give it a rest. It's, it's a genre that's not coming back. Uh, blah, blah, triple nine, uh, London Has Fallen. London, I, I, I'm looking forward to this one, a lot. I actually am. I loved Olympus Has Fallen. It was a great modern day die hard reboot with the White House Secret Service twist. This one takes the story to London. Gerard Butler and Aaron Eckhart are back in it. I'm excited. I don't know if it's gonna be good. The first one was kind of trashy action pulp, but I'll pay money for this one for sure. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, this one's on my radar as well, if only because of the cast. We have Tina Fey, Margot Robbie, Morton Freeman, Alfred Molina, a really great and potentially funny cast, and anything that Tina Fey is in is, is usually worth watching, so I'll check that out. Zootopia, another dime a dozen animation, probably gonna skip that one, it, at least in theaters. I'll watch all these eventually. Brothers Grimsey is the next um, Sasha Baron Cohen comedy. I don't think he's gonna retap into the magic of Borat or Bruno. This one looks like it probably would bomb, especially in early March. Uh, Divergent uh, series, I Legion, is it the fourth one, the fifth one? I've lost track, I don't care. Blah, 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 miracle. Batman v Superman, I'll be, I'll be straight up, I don't care about this movie, I really don't. All the trailers, all the reaction, all the hype, I, I don't really buy into it. Man of Steel wasn't that great. I preferred Christian Bale as Batman, I'm just not excited about it. I'm gonna go see it, like opening night, don't get me wrong, I just, I really am not excited, I don't really care about this one, but maybe, It'll surprise me and it'll blow me away. Um, measured expectations, though. Another sequel that's like 20 years late, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2. Who, who cares? Like, move on. We had a TV show, we had a movie. That was a decade ago. Does anyone still care about this property? I don't. Uh, Collide, uh, Keeping Up with the Joneses, blah, 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 blah. Anything. Jungle Book, the live action remake from Jon Favreau. This could be good. This really could, this could be a, this one I think can go either way. It could be a huge flop that everyone hates or it could be like a giant box office smash that everyone loves. I think like, I'm thinking like Alice in Wonderland, like that movie did huge money in 2010. It was a live action, you know, redo of an old Disney classic. This seems very similar. It could impress or it could be a big flop. The Huntsman, I don't know why we, we still making sequels to movies that not a lot of people liked or even saw when they first came out. Um, Keanu, this is gonna be great because it's from Key and Peele. Those are some funny dudes, I'll see this one. Mother's Day, oh, do we need another one of those like ensemble romance movies? Give it a rest. Ratchet and Clank, I, this is the first time hearing about it. Okay, good for you, Hollywood. Blah, 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 Civil War, Captain America. Yeah, I'm really excited for this one. <laughs> uh, all right, let's keep going. Uh, Snowden, this was originally scheduled to come out in 2015. It stars uh, jo JGL, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, as Edward Snowden, the, uh, the whistleblower from the NSA. It seemed like it was gonna be an Oscar bait biopic, but because it got pushed to next May, it leaves me really worried. Like, why did it have to get pushed back an entire half year? Is there something wrong with it? I'm thinking yes. So I was originally excited for this, and now I'm like, uh-oh, this could be a disaster. Uh, Angry Birds movie, that is a mistake, I, but it's gonna make a lot of money. 
Think Minions, yeah. Uh, nice Guys, the trailer for this really impressed me. It's like a gritty, smart, and violent crime thriller. Ryan Gosling, Russell Crowe, I'm in. Totally excited for this. Speaking of Alice in Wonderland, we're getting a sequel to that one. The whole cast is back, Johnny Depp, my uh, Wyakowski, I don't know how you say that. Um, another one of those movies that's probably going to do huge numbers at the box office with sort of middling reviews. Uh, X-Men Apocalypse. I've always liked the X-Men franchise. I don't have a lot of high hopes or expectations for this one. I'm just sort of like, I'm gonna wait and see, but uh, it could be good. USS Indianapolis Men of Courage with Nicolas Cage. This one looks kind of janky. This looks like straight to video. Honestly, it's gonna do terrible. Calling it now, Men of Courage, not gonna do well. Nicolas Cage, I love you, but your career washed up years ago. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, I'm actually kind of excited for this. I liked the Michael Bay live action reboot. It was kind of fun. And I feel like when the origin story out of the way, this next one could be pretty good. Uh, Conjuring 2, Now You See Me 2. Why, no, oh, stop it. These, no, oh, Now You See Me sucked. Why are we getting a second one? Warcraft, crossing my fingers. If we can get a good video game adaptation, maybe that'll open the floodgates for other films. The Last of Us is coming out with a movie in the next couple years. I'm excited for that. Warcraft could be a really great potential property to sort of open the doors on that genre and do it in a right way. On June 17th, we have Central Intelligence starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart. I saw the trailer for this. I'm pretty excited because I love Dwayne in the Fast and Furious and action franchises but he's even better when he's trying to do comedy. Remember the other guys? He was brilliant in that, and I hope we get a whole movie that's sort of in that tone, and the trailer seemed like it could be. Finding Dory, I have high, high hopes for this. The original was a classic from Pixar, and this one seems like they might be able to strike lightning twice, but let's hold our breath. And then late June, we have Independence Day 2 Resurgent, which is probably my number one most anticipated film of 2016. That I'm including Star Wars Rogue One, which we'll get to at the end of this list. But I love Independence Day. It is one of my all-time favorite films, and the trailer actually looks pretty solid for Resurgence. I can't wait to see Jeff Goldblum and Bill Pullman back in action fighting the aliens. Can't wait for that movie. I'm surprised, though, it's coming out in late June and not July 4th weekend, but whatever. You do what you want. The Purge 3. You know, you know if, if at first you don't succeed, keep trying. Uh, Legend of Tarzan. Like, we need another one of those movies. Uh, Ghostbusters, the all-female reboot. Pass. Uh, Ice Age Collision Course. Apparently we're still making those movies. Star Trek Beyond. I didn't hate the trailer like a lot of others did. And even if I did hate the trailer, I've liked the last two movies. Yes, they're not really Star Trek. They're more like action movie in space with Star Trek characters. But I don't care. Uh, the Untitled Born film. <sighs> I don't know. That's a hard no for me. I didn't like uh, the Born franchise nearly as much as most people. I thought Legacy was kind of a... Know, why bother? And Damon went out on a high note. Ultimatum was the best of the three, and why come back? Don't. Suicide Squad. This could be really fun. I love Will Smith. Margot Robbie is blowing up lately, and this could be a really great, gritty, dark superhero film. And then right after that, on August the 12th, we have a remake of Ben-Hur. I finally saw the original with Charlton Heston just a couple months ago, and I loved it. The chariot race is iconic, one of the greatest scenes in the history of Hollywood. Do we need to remake it, though? I don't know, and I feel like it's going to lose a lot of its luster with CGI and effects, because what made the original so great was that wide cinemascope frame and the practical effects, the real sets and the real costumes. But it could be good. I'll hold, I'll hold you. I'm excited to see it, or at least interested to see it. That's a better way to put it. Sausage Party, that's Seth Rogen and uh, uh, Jonah Hill and James Franco. That, with the movie, the title alone, I'm... Okay. <laughs> Uh, blah, blah, blah. Mechanic? Resurrect? Why Why are we making another Jason Statham mechanic movie? The first one was whatever. I completely forgot about it. It's only a couple years old. I, that one, this one completely perplexes me. That movie should not exist. Uh, Patience here, blah, blah, blah. Sully. This one looks like it could be really good. Clint Eastwood is directing Tom Hanks in a biopic about Sully, uh, Sullenberger, or whatever the guy's name is, the guy that landed the, the uh, United Airlines flight on the Hudson River a few years back. Great story. Great cast. Great director. This one, I'm having my eyes on. It could be an early Oscar contender. Calling it now. Bridget Jones's Baby, because that movie needed to become a trilogy. Um, my wife loves the first two. We'll probably go see this as a date night. Um, but I don't know. Re uh, Renee Zellweger, she got like, she did something to her face. She looks different now, and it's frightening. 
Uh, we'll continue. Let's see. Magnificent Seven. Another reboot remake of a classic film from 50 years ago that maybe that's the new trend in Hollywood. Like, we've run out of superheroes. So let's just go back to the 40s and 50s and bring those westerns into today. Um, the cast, though. Denzel Washington, Chris Pratt, Ethan Hawke, Vincent Dionforio, Lee Bon Hong, Luke Rams, Wagner. I don't know the rest of these names, but the first five... Those are great names. Those are great names. This movie could be good. It could be total shit. And it could spit all over the legacy of a classic Western. I'll wait and see. Storks, Besties, Deepwater Horizon. Deepwater Horizon seems to me like a movie that'll bomb. It seems like a, like a shameless cash grab on a recent tragic event. Oscar bait. Going to have all those Oscar buzz about it. But ultimately, it's not going to be very good. Calling that one now. Not excited for it. In October, December, we have The Accountant. This looks like it could be good. A live-action thriller with Ben Affleck, Anna Kendrick, Jeffrey Tambor, and J.K. Simmons. I'm in. Blah, 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 blah. Monster High, blah, blah. None of these really catch my attention. We're we getting another Underworld movie? Really? Okay. Whatever. I feel like Kate Beckinsale's already done six of those, but all right. Ouija 2 and Jack Reacher 2. I liked, I kind of liked the first Jack Reacher. I think I gave it a seven on movie night, but not a movie that I really need to see a sequel from. Uh, continuing into November, Doctor Strange, another Marvel property that I don't know a lot about, but because it's Marvel, I am just at a baseline pretty excited to see it, because they've always, always, there hasn't been any big disappointments from Marvel. Iron Man 2 is probably the one I like the least in the MCU, and even that, I think I scored like a 6 or a 7. Um, continuing into mid-November, uh, Fantastic Beasts, this is a big Harry Potter spinoff. A perfect time for me to finally catch up and watch the first eight movies, which I have never seen, and I'm very embarrassed to admit. Uh, let's keep going, blah, blah, blah. The Founder. This is a, uh, a Michael Keaton biopic about the founder of McDonald's, Ray Kroc. And with Michael Keaton and the last few projects he's done, I'm really excited for this. He has been impressing with a lot of great projects. And the founder of McDonald's seems like a really interesting story, so I, I have my eye on that one. Blah, blah, blah. And then we have Rogue One, a Star Wars story. I don't know if that's the official title, but I really don't like it. A Star Wars story. I thought we were going with Star Wars Anthology. Um, either way, th this is the opening paragraph of The Scroll of a New Hope. Rebel spies attacking from a secret base. This is that movie. Can't wait. Huge Star Wars fan. It's probably my number two most anticipated film of the year. We had an Assassin's Creed film, live action. That should be pretty good. Who's involved? Michael Fassbender and Marion Cotillard. Pretty good. I'm excited. That could be great. It could be shit. But I love the first two games I played on the PlayStation 3, and I can't wait to play some more. Passengers. This is a live-action film with Jennifer Lawrence and Chris Pratt, and that alone is going to get me to see it. I don't even care. I don't know. As long as those two are in it, it's going to be fun. Blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of the year, on Christmas Day, we get, for some fucking reason, a remake of Jumanji. No. No. Just don't do it. Okay, uh, that's the entire calendar 2016 in a nutshell. Thanks for listening to my thoughts on everything. What's your most anticipated or least anticipated film that I just read off here? Leave your responses in the comments below. I look forward to the discussion. Until next time, that does it for me. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening. I hope to see you right back here in the very near future.